All right, thorax and abdomen is 21 questions out of thorax, abdomen, surgical, GI, and urology studies, and I'll break down those for you in a couple parts here. For chest x-ray, you guys know chest x-ray, you know your central rays, you know double inspiration, but do you know? Do you remember why? Do you remember how to evaluate rotation on a PA chest? Um, do you remember why we do 72 inches for chest x-ray? Why do we do left lateral for chest x-ray? Do you know your anatomy? Anterior to posterior on a lateral chest? When do we do lordotic chest? We're looking for TB. We're going to use a cephalad angle to remove the clavicles. We're looking at the apices. Go back and review decubitus chest x-rays. Why do we do them? We're looking for pleural effusion, right? It's fluid. Just keep in mind, air rises, fluid drops. So for decubitus chest, we're most likely looking for fluid on the side down. You want a horizontal beam, and then textbook is patient in that position for five minutes. Oblique chest. The 45 oblique is for localization, a little bit steeper, that 60 degree is for the heart shadow. When would you use AP supine um, chest x-ray? You might be looking for an ET tube if the patient was just intubated. Do you know the level of the ET tube and where it's supposed to be? If you say two inches above the carina, that's great, but remember boards is in centimeters. So make sure you're reviewing centimeters. So five CM or two inches um, or T5 or sternal angle. Aspiration, remember the most common um, area for aspiration is the right main bronchus. Why? It's higher and more vertical than the left. And just something to keep in mind, high KVP for chest x-ray, we want to produce an image with long scale of contrast. Review your anatomy. PA chest, uh, anatomy anterior to posterior for lateral chest, go through thorax, ribs, sternum, um, and all those landmarks for me. Ribs. Um, your textbook separates out upper ribs versus lower ribs. Upper ribs is centered at T7 with inspiration. Lower ribs is centered at T10 expiration. Rib obliques for textbook is only elongated. And remember, when you're in a PA oblique to elongate the side of interest, pull it away. When you're in a posterior oblique to elongate the side of interest, towards. Sternum. Usually a lateral in the RAO. Uh, why do we use 72 inches for a lateral? Remember that OID between the sternum and the wall bucky, that's a pretty big space. So we're gonna use 72 inches to compensate for that. You wanna get the shoulders out of the way. RAO, why RAO and not LAO? You wanna use the heart shadow. So it's a really um, small oblique. It's only 15 to 20 degrees. It's um, you know, one of the most shallow obliques I think we do for anything. And the thicker chest has actually less rotation than thinner chest, so keep that in mind. What we would use as an alternate, and just remember the alternate for REO is LPO. So say you had a trauma patient, someone who couldn't stand, you could do an LPO on the table. A breathing technique, so you can see in this image here, everything around the sternum is blurry. They used a breathing technique where they used a low MA and increased their seconds to blur out the ribs. Soft tissue neck, what could they really ask you about soft tissue neck? Um, most often it's gonna be the breathing instructions. So what is the particular breathing instructions for soft tissue neck? Slow, deep breath in through the nose. You want your patient to take that slow, deep breath in. You wanna fill that airway. Why do we do soft tissue neck? Uh, epiglottitis, strider, sometimes foreign body would be your main reasons. Abdomen. Go back to abdomen, go back to A&P. I want you to know your quadrants. I want you to know which anatomy sits in what quadrant. Um, breathing. Why do we use expiration for abdomen? What does that do to your diaphragm? Where does it move your diaphragm? Um, and upright abdomen, you remember you're centering two inches above the crest. You want to include above the diaphragm. We're looking for free air. We have a horizontal beam. We're looking for air fluid levels. Decubitus abdomen. We're going to use a left lateral decubitus. Why? Why do we use left? Because the liver is on the right. The stomach is on the left. The stomach has that gastric bubble in it, which has air in it. 
So if we use that side, it might be hard to differentiate between the air in the gastric bubble and free air. So we use the right side up, left side down. So the liver is right here. It's a solid organ, doesn't contain um, a bunch of air. So the free air will sit right over top of it. Remember a textbook, they are supposed to be um, in that position for five minutes prior to exposure. Even though you may not see that at clinical, um, that's what you need to do. So just keep in mind, um, the medical term for free air is that pneumoperitoneum, free air in the abdomen. Uh, horizontal beam, you want the central ray parallel to the floor. You might see that sort of terminology um, and why we do left lateral for 